Okay. <clears throat> Whoops, I'm going to bring it up first here. There we go. Okay. All right. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, hail Joseph the just, wisdom is with you. Blessed are you among all men, and blessed is Jesus, the fruit of Mary, your faithful spouse. Holy Joseph, worthy foster father of Jesus Christ, pray for us sinners and obtain divine wisdom for us from God now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We are day 14. Go for it. Zealous defender of Christ, pray for us. He, St. Joseph, protects those who revere him and accompanies them on their journey through this life. Just as he protected and accompanied Jesus when he was growing up, St. Marie, Jose Maria Escrava. From the moment the angel revealed to St. Joseph that he was to be the father of the Messiah to, to when he took his final breath in the arms of Jesus and Mary, St. Joseph zealously defended Jesus. St. Joseph always defended his son from any threat against him. St. Joseph was a dutiful watchman, guarding and defending and sacrificing everything for Jesus and his safety. St. Joseph offered the same protection for his wife, too. He protected his son and his wife as a loving father and faithful husband. In some translations of the litany of St. Joseph, the title Zealous Defender of Christ, in Latin, Christi Defensor, Sedule is given as diligent defender of Christ or watchful defender of Christ. Both are acceptable translations and have similar meanings. Namely, St. Joseph defended Jesus, a child of St. Joseph. You can have great confidence knowing that your spiritual father also desires to zealously defend you. St. Joseph zealously defends you. Her eternal mission of St. Joseph is not finished. A father's work is never finished until his children are safely home. In heaven, St. Joseph no longer needs to watch over and protect Jesus. You, however, are not yet in heaven. You need the protection of St. Joseph. Your spiritual father knows what is harmful to your soul, and he wants to watch over you and help you arrive safely home. St. Joseph will never abandon you. Your role is to entrust yourself to his diligent care and never look back. Our destiny is in the hands of St. of Joseph. Joseph, the guardian of his Lord and the spouse of his queen. Joseph, the foster father of Jesus and the head of the Holy Family has in his kindness Deign to accept us as his children and permit us to call him Father. Blessed William Joseph Shamanati. You have nothing to fear with St. Joseph at your side. What is there to be afraid of with such a zealous defender as your father who loves you? St. Joseph held the maker of the universe in his hands. St. Joseph fed the creator of the heavens. In his role as earthly father to Jesus, St. Joseph lovingly commanded the Son of God. Heaven and earth obeyed him. All hell trembles before him. Joseph's name will be a name of protection all during our lives. Uh, Blessed William Joseph, Shamanate. St. Joseph will increase your zeal for Christ. Hey, and model, St. Joseph will teach you how to depend yeah. zealously. Right. If you are a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, you are going to be criticized, hated, ridiculed, and mocked by the world, oftentimes by your own family and friends. Your suffering will be great, but your witness to truth your witness to Jesus will be greater. St. Joseph will help you be a zealous witness to the truth of Christ. Your defense of Christ must be great. You should always strive to defend the person and name of Jesus Christ against 
all blasphemy, insult, and sacrilege. You must defend the church as well as her teachings and sacraments from all attacks, heresies, and falsehoods. To defend the church is to defend Christ. You must resemble your spiritual father, always willing to sacrifice yourself for love of truth. Like St. Joseph, you too can bring many souls to Jesus. How happy and blessed are they whom you, St. Joseph, love and whom you take under protection. Blessed William Joseph, Shamanate. And it starts at the bottom and goes to the top. Savior the Savior. Go ahead. To give life to someone is the greatest gift of all, greatest of all gifts. To save a life is ne is the next. Who gave life to Jesus? It was Mary. Who saved his life? It was Joseph. Ask St. Paul who persecuted him, St. Peter who denied him. Ask all the saints who put him to death. But if we ask who saved his life, be silent, patriarchs, be silent, prophets, be silent, apostles, confessors, and martyrs. Let St. Joseph speak, for this honor is his alone. He alone is the Savior of his Savior. Blessed jo William Joseph Chaminade. Savior, Save, Savior of Savior of his Savior. That sounds heretical, doesn't it? Don't worry. Blessed William Joseph Chaminade is not claiming that St. Joseph is God or greater than Jesus. Blessed William Joseph was a very holy priest and had a tremendous devotion to St. Joseph. He lived through the French Revolution and suffered many hardships during a very anti-Catholic era of France's history. Blessed Chaminade's love for Jesus, Mary, and St. Joseph gave him the strength to resist the evil intentions of the revolutionaries. At the height of the French Revolution, Blessed Chaminade spread devotion to Mary and preached fervently about St. Joseph. He encouraged his religious contemporaries to act as the heel of Mary and crush the darkness of the revolution. He knew the power of St. Joseph as well and encouraged everyone to seek refuge beneath the fatherly protection of St. Joseph. Make him, St. Joseph, responsible for the protection of your person. He who saved the life of his savior, that's William Joseph Shamanade. To understand and just, justify Blessed Shamanade's description of St. Joseph as the savior of his savior, we turn to the Gospel of Matthew. When they had departed from Bethlehem, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Joseph rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. Yeah. Matthew 2, 13 through 14. When? St. Joseph can be called the savior of the savior because he saved Jesus from the wicked intentions of Herod by taking Jesus to Egypt. St. Joseph is the only saint who has the privilege of being called the savior of the savior. Not even the mother of God has such a title. God wanted St. Joseph to have the unique title all to himself. It is a title that shows the greatness of the fatherhood of St. Joseph. It teaches us his important eternal role in the plan of God. To him, St. Joseph was entrusted the divine child when Herod loosed his assassins against him. Pope Pius XI. Blessed Shamanade is not the only one who calls St. Joseph the Savior of the Savior. St. Madeleine Sophie Barat made a similar statement. She wrote, Jesus wished to become indebted to St. Joseph for the necessities of life and of this holy patriarch alone. It may be said that he saved the life of his savior. St. Alphonsus uh, Ligori, a doctor of the church, went so far as to claim that because St. Joseph saved the savior from Herod, Jesus will not refuse anything to those who go to St. Joseph 
for assistance. He writes, the Apostle Paul writes that in the next life, Jesus Christ will render to every man according to his works, Romans 2, 6. What great glory must we not suppose that he bestowed upon St. Joseph, who served and loved him so much while he lived on earth? At the same, uh, at the last day, our Savior will say to the elect, I was hungry and you gave me to eat. I was stranger and you took me in naked and you clothed me, Matthew 25, 35. These nevertheless have fed Jesus Christ, have lodged, um, have lodged him or clothed him only in the persons of the poor. But St. Joseph procured food as well and clothes for Jesus Christ in his own person. Moreover, our Lord has promised a reward to him who gives a cup of water to the poor in his name. For whoever shall give you a drink, to give you to drink a cup of water in my name, he shall not lose his reward. Mark 940. What then must be the reward of St. Joseph, who can say to Jesus Christ, I not only provided thee with food, with a dwelling, and with clothes, but I saved thee from death, delivering him thee from the hands of Herod. All this helps to increase our confidence in St. Joseph. It makes us reflect that on account of so many merits, God will refuse no grace which St. Joseph asks of him for his devout clients. Wow, the confidence we should have in St. Joseph. Ultimately, St. Joseph saved Jesus' life so that Jesus could save us. For his part, Jesus is extremely grateful to St. Joseph for all that he suffered to make the saving mission of our Lord possible. <clears throat> Exile, poverty, hardship, fatigue, ridicule, and so many other hardships. St. Joseph suffered so much for Jesus. Without the suffering of St. Joseph, we would not have the Savior to set us free from sin and death. That is why Jesus grants every desire and wish of his beloved virginal, virginal father. The sufferings of St. Joseph are rarely mentioned in homilies or writings on St. Joseph. Yet, if you think about it, being the father of the Savior could not have been easy. St. Joseph's fatherly mission entailed tremendous suffering. <laughs> How great a share had not the glorious St. Joseph in the chalice of Jesus by the services which he rendered to his sacred humanity, St. Mary Magdalene de Pazze. St. Joseph's suffering began before our Lord was even born. When St. Joseph discovered that his beloved wife was pregnant, his heart, mind, and soul experienced excruciating sorrow. His sorrow did not come from suspecting Mary had been unfaithful. He never doubted Mary's love, fidelity, and holiness. Rather, his suffering came from knowing that he was not worthy to be the husband of so holy a woman, nor did he consider himself worthy to be the father of a heavenly child. He realized that Mary belonged totally to God, and out of justice, he needed to give God his due by distancing himself from Mary. The thought of distancing, distancing himself from Mary caused more sorrow in his heart than any martyr could ever experience. Unlike the suffering of the martyrs who shed their blood for love of Christ, St. Joseph's suffering was interior and of such intensity that it is more meritorious than the suffering of all Christian martyrs. Preparing to distance himself from Mary, the delight of his heart, caused him such deep sorrow that God had to send an angel to comfort and instruct him not to be afraid to take her into his home. Abraham was made the father of a multitude of nations because of his willingness to sacrifice his son. St. Joseph was made the father of a new covenant people because of his willing, willingness to distance himself from his own beloved wife. St. Joseph's suffering continued for the remainder of his married life. When he traveled with his pregnant wife to Jerusalem, the census, he suffered greatly from not being able 
to provide a suitable place for his wife to give birth. What man wants his wife to give birth in a cold, dirty, and smelly animal stable? Yet a stable was all that St. Joseph could provide. Men by nature are providers. If a man is unable to provide as much or as well for the ones he loves as he wishes, he dies inside. St. Joseph died daily. St. Joseph experienced sorrow when his son was circumcised. When he and his wife saw the blood coming from their son's body, they knew it was a foreshadowing of things to come. When and by what method, they did not know. But they were so attuned to divine mysteries and Old Testament prophecies that they knew there was more bloodshed to come. It would be confirmed when Jesus, Mary, and Joseph appeared before the priest at the temple in Jerusalem for the ritual of the purification of the new mother. On what was supposed to be a joyful occasion, St. Joseph learned that his wife's heart would be pierced and his son was destined to be a sign of contradiction. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, behold, behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that would be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be may be revealed. Luke 2, 33-35. Simeon's, Simeon's words were spoken to Mary, but St. Joseph heard them. When St. Joseph heard Simeon announce to Mary that Jesus would be a cause of division, and that Mary's heart would be pierced by a sword, the prophetic words penetrated the loving heart of St. Joseph, causing him unspeakable sorrow. It was a sorrow that he would carry in his heart and soul for the rest of his life. What man wants to hear that his wife and child are going to be are going to suffer ridicule and hatred? What husband would not experience tortures of the heart, knowing that his wife is going to be pierced by a sword? Scripture tells us that Mary pondered the words of Simeon in her heart. See Luke 2, 19. St. Joseph had to, had to have pondered Simeon's words in his heart as well. No man could walk away undisturbed after hearing such shocking statements about his wife and son. The hearts of a husband and wife are one. What is of concern is to, to one is what is of concern to one is of concern to the other. For decades, St. Joseph carried the sorrowful prophecy of Simeon in his heart. Because his love is great, St. Joseph's suffering was interior, intense, and long-lasting. O oh, most sensitive heart of St. Joseph, who, resembling the tender heart of Mary, felt the sorrows of the Most Holy Mother, tell me, what did you feel? hearing the terrible prophecy of Simeon, yet with that generosity, with what silence and unalterable resignation did you accept from the hands of God, even the sword of sorrow for our good? How can I show you my thanks? Oh, my sweetest saint, I want to imitate your generosity and to any painful news I will say with you, God's will be done. Blessed Bartolo Longo. Were it possible for St. Joseph to prevent his wife and son from suffering, he would have done everything in his power to protect them. A good and loving husband is willing to stand in front of his, his wife and have the sword pierce his heart instead of hers. Yet according to the plan of God, St. Joseph knew that he had to allow his wife's heart and soul to be pure. Such suffering was required so that a new, new humanity could be born. His Immaculate Bride had not suffered the pangs of birth at the manger in Bethlehem because she was free from all stain of original sin and exempt from all its penalties but Simeon's prophecy had foretold that a day would come when St. Joseph's wife would endure a torture type of birth pain, spiritual birth pains. 
saying Joseph's wife is the new Eve, and God was going to use her heart as a spiritual womb. She would have to undergo spiritual birth pangs in order for humanity to be reborn in Christ. Simeon had prophesied, prophesied it. St. Joseph knew it had to happen. His role was to prepare his wife and son for the sacrifice. No martyr's suffering has been greater than the suffering of St. Joseph. Simeon's prophecy had been addressed to Mary alone. St. Joseph knew why, and the knowledge caused him even greater suffering. St. Joseph understood that Simeon's prophecy meant that when the time came for Mary's heart to be pierced, she would be without St. Joseph. The time, place, and manner of the piercing were unknown to St. Joseph, but he understood that he would not be there with Mary. In light of Simeon's prophecy, he must have spent his marriage lovingly consoling Mary and preparing her for the hours when she would suffer unparalleled sorrow and agony, her spiritual birth pangs. St. Joseph's sweet consolations helped prepare Mary for the sacrifice of Calvary. He could not prevent her maternal suffering, but he could prepare her for it. His years of love and devotion were a consolation to Mary's immaculate heart. St. Joseph is the greatest consoler of the heart of Mary. How beautiful and simple did you, St. Joseph, see this innocent dove, Mary, and how greatly you suffered at the vision of her martyrdom without you, the solitude of the wife whom you loved as well. Oh, what martyrdom racked your soul at the fore vision of the passion and the seven swords which would pierce the immaculate heart of Mary. You dreamed of her alone, alone without Jesus, and this affliction embittered your happy life. Blessed Concepcion Gabera de Ar Armida. The Lord that was going to pierce Mary's heart on Calvary needed to pierce the heart of St. Joseph as well, but in a different way. He would be he would not be out Calvary, but the sword needed to pierce his paternal heart, since it is fitting that the rebirth of mankind would involve both a mother and a father. Husbands do not experience labor pangs as a woman does, but every husband is called to journey with his wife throughout the pregnancy and prepare her for delivery. As a good husband, St. Joseph would see to it that his wife was well prepared for her suffering. He spent decades preparing her for the painful delivery on Calvary. At Calvary, Mary must have experienced great consolation and strength as she remembered all that her husband had done for her and their son across the years. The consolation offered by John the Apostle, Mary Magdalene, and several others paled in comparison to the consolation offered to Mary by the man who was not even there. God spared St. Joseph the tortures of Calvary, but Mary brought him there in her heart. Her crucified son, before whom she stood, was also Joseph's son. Mary remembered her husband and stood strong in faith, hope, and love. There were many memories of St. Joseph that would have flooded Mary's heart at Calvary. They were all a source of consolation and strength for Mary. The memory of St. Joseph's own strength in suffering would have increased Mary's determination to witness and suffer. She would have remembered the slaughter of the innocents and how much that he had wounded her husband, how it, and how much that it had wounded her husband's heart. Remember when the angel came to St. Joseph and instructed him to take the child and his mother to Egypt. St. Joseph was not told that children would be slaughtered and mothers would witness the death of their children. Mary would have remembered how bitterly St. Joseph had wept over the loss of so many precious children. It was the source of tremendous suffering to St. Joseph but he 
remain firm in his resolution to do the will of God. Put him right. across. Hang on, hang on. I, I don't know what where was that. Here, there. Okay. Mary did like Saint uh, Joseph and uh, Mary. I'm gonna interrupt you in a minute. Would you just keep reading until I get back? Yep. Joseph and Mary had not yet crossed the mountains that separated them from the desert when suddenly the painful moans echoed through the hills, reached her heart, their, their ears. These heart and heart trending cries, which were the cries of the mothers of innocent saints, watered on the breast and arms of their mothers, filled the hearts of Satan of Joseph and Mary with tremendous sadness, blessed Bartolo Longo. At the foot of the cross, Mary remembered how St. Joseph, as the head of the family, had taken her and Jesus to Egypt, and how strong St. Joseph had been in protecting and caring for their family. Walking to Egypt could not have been a safe or comfortable journey for the Holy Family. Egypt was a very dangerous place notorious for bandits, thieves, and pagan practices. St. Joseph's years of living there must have been very You're just being snuggly, aren't you? St. Thomas Aquinas and St. Bonaventure believed that the Holy Family was in exile in Egypt for almost seven years. These years would have been filled with much suffering for St. Joseph. Mary remembered these years and how strong St. Joseph had been for love of God and their family. At Calvary, Mary, and Mary remembered all the suffering St. Joseph had endured during their time in Egypt. According to the mystical revelations of Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, the hardships of the Holy Family in Egypt were especially felt by St. Joseph because he was the loving head of the family. <clears throat> the responsibility of taking care of the family was primarily St. Joseph's, uh, Joseph's oft times unable to acquire sufficient work, food, clean water, or proper housing. The man of the house suffered greatly because uh, he was unable to provide everything that was needed by his family. Okay, come on, Crystal. In Egypt, St. Joseph was in a land which was not only foreign, but also hostile to Israelites. The Egyptians resented that the Israelites had escaped from their tyranny and also that they had been the cause of many of their ancestors being drowned in the Red Sea. St. Francis de, um, de Sales. In the accounts of the mystical visions of Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, they're told that in Egypt, the Holy Family underwent the frightful experience of being surrounded by robbers with bad intentions. On Calvary, Mary remembered how strong her husband had been and how he was willing to die out of love for his family. In this memory, she would have found the strength to be a co-victim with Jesus. Mary, Mary would have... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Mary would have also recalled the memory of the time she and her husband had lost Jesus for three days. Losing a child is the worst nightmare a parent could ever face. For three days, the hearts of Mary and Joseph were filled with anxiety and worry. Yet she remembered that after three days of tremendous sorrow and suffering, she and her husband found Jesus in the temple. Finding him, their hearts were filled with inexpressible joy. In some way, losing Jesus for just those three days was a preparation for Calvary. Remembering this event, Mary once again would have found strength and consolation in her sweet Saint Joseph. At Calvary, the memory of all Saint Joseph had done for his wife and son must have been a consolation to Jesus as well. Through the role model Joseph provided for him of long and faithful suffering, Jesus was better able to offer his own sacrifice on Calvary. Our Lord knew well that his father had saved him from Herod, carried tremendous burdens of love in his heart, consoled his mother, and helped Mary prepare for her suffering with Jesus. God did not require that St. Joseph be physically present 
at the sacrifice of Calvary, but Jesus knew that he would never have made it to Calvary without him. God made the sacrifice of Calvary dependent upon the fatherly sacrifices that St. Joseph had offered during the hidden years of the Holy Family. The fruit of St. Joseph's paternal love and suffering made him the spiritual father of the new covenant family. Similar to Mary, Jesus, too, would have had St. Joseph on his mind and in his heart at Calvary. <clears throat> The virginal heart of hearts of Jesus, Mary, and St. Joseph are one. As their hearts are one, so is their mission. Jesus alone is the savior of the world, but he wanted his mother and father to have a unique participation in the work of redemption. The union of the virginal and sorrowful hearts of Jesus, Mary, and St. Joseph at Nazareth, Bethlehem, Egypt, and Calvary was the principal means that God chose to enable all of us to be born again. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph made it, make it possible for us to be children of God. What we learn from the sacrificial fatherhood of St. Joseph is that he is a man who takes care of those entrusted to him, no matter the cost. He offers consolation and strength to all his children. As your spiritual father, he wants to take care of you just as he took care of Mary and Jesus. He wants to console you and increase your capacity for self-sacrificing love. God has given you a mission as a Christian. Your mission will require sacrifice, sorrow, and suffering. You will experience your own Calvary. With St. Joseph in your heart, you will find a father's consolation and the strength to endure all things for love. St. Joseph knows that as you seek to do God's will, Satan, a spiritual Herod, is going to unleash his assassins against you. Mm -hmm. You need St. Joseph to protect you. Your spiritual father will lovingly watch over you and never stop fighting for you. With his assistance, you can be victor victorious in suffering and overcoming the enemy. St. John Paul II emphasized this Point in a homily he gave during a papal visit to the shrine of St. Joseph in Kalis, Poland, he said, The angel had warned him, St. Joseph, flee with the child because he was threatened by mortal danger. From the gospel, we learn about those who were threatening the child's life. In the first place, Herod, but then also all his Herod's followers. Joseph of Nazareth, who saved Jesus from the cruelty of Herod, is shown to us in this moment as a great supporter of the cause of the defense of human life. From the first moment of conception to natural death, in this place, therefore, we wish to commend human life to divine providence and to St. Joseph, especially the life of children not yet born in our homeland and throughout the world. And you're going to suffer in life saint joseph can't prevent all of your suffering but he can prepare you for it and console you when you are in the midst of sorrow and pain he offers a father's love and protection saint joseph with the love and generosity with which he guarded jesus so too will guard your soul and as he defended him from herod so will he defend your soul from the fiercest Herod, the devil. All the care that the patriarch St. Joseph has for Jesus, he has for you and will always help you with his patronage. He will free you from the persecution of the wicked and proud Herod and will not allow your heart to be estranged from, from Jesus. Ite ade osef. Go to Joseph with extreme confidence, because I do not remember having asked anything St. Joseph without having obtained it readily. St. Pio of Petrosina? Petrosina. That's Padre Pio. Oh, okay. At the shrine of St. Joseph in Palace, Poland, where St. John Paul II preached his inspiring homily, on St. Joseph in 1997 in the crypt of the church, 
There is a museum dedicated to St. Joseph in thanksgiving for his role in saving the lives of many Catholic priests in prison in the Dachau concentration camp in World War II. There were many priests and bishops in the Dachau concentration camp. According to official records, 2,579 Catholic priests were in Dachau. Of these, 1,034 of the priests died there. St. Joseph helped them in their suffering and gave them the strength to offer their lives for love of Jesus. As for the other 1,545 priests who survived Dachau, all of them attribute their liberation from the camp on April 29, 1945, to the powerful intercession of St. Joseph. Here's the story. The first Catholic priest arrived in Dachau in 1939. In the following months and years, the numbers continued to grow because priests were transferred to Dachau from the Auschwitz and Sachsenhausen uh, concentration camps. On December 8, 1940, the priests in Dachau made a communal act of consecration to St. Joseph, asking him to help them survive their ordeal and save them from death. They consecrated themselves to St. Joseph in particular because it was St. Joseph who had saved the Son of God from death when Herod wanted to kill him. And the priests knew that he had the power to save them from the Nazis as well. The act of consecration to St. Joseph was frequently renewed. The imprisoned priests also renewed the consecration annually in a more solemn manner. Additionally, the priests prayed novenas to St. Joseph, asking for help in their dire situation. When the camp was finally liberated in 1945, the remaining priests testified that it was St. Joseph who was responsible for their survival. In Thanksgiving, many of the priests, especially the priests from Poland, organized a pilgrimage to the shrine of St. Joseph in Kalis, Poland in 1948. The pilgrimage was such a memorable event that a second pilgrimage was organized in 1958 and subsequent pilgrimages followed in 1995. The 37 remaining priests who had survived Dachau were present for the pilgrimage. Today, all the priests have died, yet their memory and tribute to St. Joseph lives on in the museum. Attached to the shrine. St. Joseph saved Jesus from Herod. St. Joseph protected Mary from robbers. St. Joseph consoled Jesus and Mary and prepared them for Calvary. St. Joseph was in the heart of Jesus and Mary at Calvary. St. Joseph consoled the many priests who suffered and died in Dachau. St. Joseph helped many priests survive the camp. St. Joseph, your spiritual father, wants to protect you, prepare you, console you, and help you make of your life a sacrifice for others. We all have him in St. Joseph, a model and protector, St. Peter Julian Amarn. Let us say to the great patriarchs, here we are, we are all for you. May you be all for us, show us the way, strengthen us in every step, and lead us to where divide pro divine providence wants us to go, St. Joseph Morello. Litany of St. Joseph, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ hear us. Christ graciously hear us. God the Father of heaven. Have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Noble offspring of David, pray for us. Light of the patriarchs, pray for us. Spouse of the Mother of God, pray for us. Chaste guardian of the Virgin, pray for us. Foster Father of the Son of God, pray for us. Zealous Defender of Christ, pray for us. Head of the Holy Family, pray for us. 
Saint Joseph, most just. Pray for us. Saint Joseph, most chaste. Pray for us. Joseph, most prudent. Pray for us. Joseph, most courageous. Pray for us. Joseph, most obedient. Pray for us. Joseph, most faithful. Pray for us. Mirror of patience. Pray for us. Lover of poverty. Pray for us. Model of workmen. Pray for us. Glory of domestic life. Pray for us. Guardian of virgins. Pray for us. Pillar of families. Pray for us. Comfort of the afflicted. Pray for us. Hope of the sick. Pray for us. Patron of the dying. Pray for us. Terror of demons. Pray for us. Protector of the Holy Church. Pray for us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. He has, he has he made has, him go. I'm sorry, sir. He has made him Lord of his household. And prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, who in your loving providence chose blessed St. Joseph to be the spouse of your holy, most holy mother, grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Okay, tonight's Sorrowful Mysteries. I did read this morning. You want to be read tonight? That's fine. The Blessed Virgin Mary promised to St. Dominic and all who... Well, do we want to see if anybody has Oh, any... that's right. Yeah, sorry, Ken. Does anyone want to read along, share along with the uh, rosary tonight? Uh, typically, it's two people, red, alternating red and black. So we don't... It's hard to do with three. It gets confusing. Yeah. But two other does people anybody have, have does anybody have any thoughts on the readings oh, that's of good idea. the Saint Joseph consecration? Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. I was sharing this I was sharing this morning how uh, I had been watching a documentary and um uh one of the um SS, the senior SS officer, the uh, most gruesome among Hitler's generals, uh, Zimmler, was the one who invented the concentration camps and started the one in Dachau and spread them out from there. So any uh, cruelty that he perpetrated was from his evil mind and heart. So yeah, those priests went through horrible uh, experience. <clears throat> but how beautiful the St. Joseph is so, this one and yesterday's, I think it was really, really um, accentuate the relevance of St. Joseph and how interesting that we're experiencing him now in ways that the church hasn't really brought out to. I think we're privileged to have this experience because uh, I think it's preparing us for what's yet to come. This is not going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. And um, Mary's certainly giving us a lot of uh, warnings. So let us abide. Hmm. <clears throat> Okay, tonight's Miss Rosary is the Sorrowful Mysteries of the Rosary. We'll start with the 15 promises of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Blessed Virgin Mary promised to St. Dominic and to all who followed that whatever you ask in the Rosary will be granted. Left for all Christians, 15 promises to those who recite the Holy Rosary as imparted to St. Dominic and Blessed Alan de la Roche. Whoever shall faithfully serve me by the recitation of the rosary shall receive signal graces. I promise my special protection and greatest graces to all those who shall recite the rosary. 
The rosary shall be a powerful armor against hell and will destroy vice, decrease sin, and defeat heresies. The rosary will cause mm -hmm. virtue and good works to flourish. It will obtain for souls the abundant mercy of God. It will withdraw the hearts of men from the love of the world and its vanity and will lift them to the desire for eternal things. All oh, that souls would sanctify themselves by this means. The soul which recommends itself to me by the recitation of the rosary shall not perish. Whoever shall recite the rosary devoutly applying himself to the consideration of its sacred mysteries shall never be conquered by misfortune. God will not chastise him in his justice. He shall not perish by an unprovided death. If he be just, he shall remain in the grace of God and become worthy of eternal life. Whoever shall have a true devotion for the rosary shall not die without the sacraments of the church. Those who are faithful to recite the rosary shall have during their life and at their death the light of God and the plenitude of his graces. At the moment of death, they shall participate in the merits of the saints in paradise. I shall deliver from purgatory those who have been devoted to the rosary. The faithful children of the rosary shall merit a high degree of glory in heaven. You shall obtain all you ask of me by the recitation of the rosary. All those who propagate the holy rosary shall be <coughs> in their necessities. I have obtained from my divine son that all the advocates of the rosary shall have for intercessors the entire celestial court during their life and at the hour of death. All who recite the rosary are my sons and daughters and brothers and sisters of my only son, Jesus Christ. Devotion of my rosary is a great sign of predestination. O oh, Immaculata, re we renew our consecration to you. May we surrender ourselves to you completely and in every aspect. This evening, we'll be praying through the Sorrowful Mysteries, beginning with the Apostles' Creed, followed by our intentions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. <clears throat> On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He is ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We're praying today for an increase of faith, hope, and charity. We are praying that grace and peace would be ours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ, our Lord. O oh, Immaculata, please intercede that by living in simplicity and gratitude, we may recognize creation as a gift received from the Father's love. The February Mission of Immaculata Intention. And we lift up the following special Landkeeper projects, the Joshua Project. Holy God, thank you for outpouring of graces and Holy Spirit fire upon the first diocesan Eucharistic Youth Rally or Revival Rally and held on Saturday, February 18th, 2023 at St. Rose of Lima Catholic Church in Leyden. We thank all those who fasted and prayed and participated in the 40-hour adoration leading up to and during this rally on behalf of all the young people who attended. We now turn our fasting prayers and Eucharistic adoration upon the second Eucharistic Youth Rally to be held on April 22nd at Skaggs Catholic Center of Juan Diego Catholic High School. May the root of the first rally <clears throat> spread like fire and sprout many branches and produce much more fruit during this second rally. Come Holy Spirit and pour graces upon the youth who will be attending. Give us wisdom, strategic counsel, knowledge and understanding in preparing for this rally. The <clears throat> Consecration to St. Joseph Project, praying for men and women of the Northern Deanery of the Diocese of Salt Lake City will become consecrated to St. Joseph on the feast day of St. Joseph, March 19, 2023, at the parishes of St. Joseph, St. Rose of Lima, St. Mary, St. James, Holy Family, St. Florence, St. Thomas Aquinas, Weaver State University Newman Center and St. Anne's in Salt Lake City. 
We pray for all prayer warriors who have joined a 33-day devotional, which began on February 15, 2023, specifically for this holy event, that they will be profoundly blessed and remain committed to this preparation period. And now, if anyone has an intention they would like to lift up, please feel free to unmute your microphone and do so. <clears throat> Lord, I thank you for all of the many blessings that you bestowed on each and every one of us. And I'd ask you to continue blessing those and watching over the poor and the homeless, that you would help them find a place of refuge, a place uh, to stay warm and a place for a warm meal. Lord, I'd ask you to be a source of consolation and a source of strength for those suffering through addictions that you would be their source and their strength to in their recovery process lord we continue to lift up ellen randall's granddaughter ella for the confliction of the transgender um activities, movements, and evil thoughts that are being forced down children's hearts and minds. Or we come against the spirit of transgenderism. We come against the spirit of suicide that oftentimes um, manifests as a result of these poor, confused kids. Lord God, terminate this evil spirit that's ravaging our world today and drive the enemy from the children's hearts and from their exposure to it lord god help all the children um be able to hear the truth of your love the truth of your creation the truth that there's of what you created either male or female nothing more nothing less lord god we just ask you to um, tear down this evil institution that's causing this and and the school system that is so overrun by evil uh, people the school boards teachers the hierarchy hierarchical um, um line of line of authority bring it all down lord and bring truth to everything truth to the schools truth to the children and put people in in those places that will uh, that are god-fearing individuals so that this nation can be turned around from the evil path that it is treading upon in christ's name we pray amen Yes, Jesus, please. We pray for that. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Praying for the will of the Blessed Mother and service to the Blessed Mother for the glory of the King. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. For the increase of faith, hope, and charity. Hail Amen. Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thine mercy. 
Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, we love you. Save the souls of the unborn children, all souls in purgatory, all priests and religious in all marriages and families. Saint Padre. Pray for us. The first sorrowful mystery is the agony in the garden. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. <clears throat> blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, <laughs> full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, <clears throat> full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. And lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thine mercy. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, we love you. Save the souls of the unborn children, all souls in purgatory, all priests and religious, and all marriages and families. St. Therese of Avila. Pray for us. The second sorrowful mystery is the scourging at the pillar. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, mm -hmm. pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, we love you. Save the souls of the unborn children, all souls in purgatory, all priests and religious, and all marriages and families. Holy Saint Joseph, pray for us. And protect Ella. The third sorrowful mystery, the crowning of thorns. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Thou be full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed, the, blessed are the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thine mercy. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, we love you. Save the souls of the unborn children, all souls in purgatory, all priests and religious, and all marriages and families. Blessed Louisa Picaretta. Pray for us. The fourth sorrowful mystery is the carrying of the cross. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, we love you. Save the souls of the unborn children, all souls in purgatory, all priests and religious, and all marriages and families. Saint uh, Padre Pio, pray for us. The fifth sorrowful mystery is the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and <clears throat> forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thine mercy. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, we love you. Save the souls of the unborn children, all souls in purgatory, all priests and religious, and all marriages and families. Uh, St. Birgitta of Sweden. Pray for us. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. To turn them, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet virgin, pray for us, O holy mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray, O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life. 
Grant, we beseech thee that by meditating upon these mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember, O Most Gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. Thee do I come before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy, hear and answer them. Amen. Amen. Praying for the intentions of the Pope, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in the battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking for the run of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.